The Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for his people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she might not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will God not grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. It's so nice to be back worshiping here at Grace. And to be honest, it's also a bit terrifying. <laughs> you see, I'm an associate in ministry, not a pastor, meaning that I spend most of my time teaching, playing, and connecting with children, youth, and their parents, not standing up here preaching. So excuse my jitters, my sweaty palms, and my crackling voice. Putting all that aside, I just could not pass up an opportunity to come worship with and thank the people of Grace, who helped to build my faith foundation, who supported me, laughed with me, and walked alongside me. It's hard to believe that it's been 15 years since I last stood up front serving at Grace. Thanks to my mom, pretty much every week I was an acolyte, Crucifer, and though I never hit the cross on the bottom of the balcony, believe me, it was very close. I sang with the eighth notes, bless you, Wally Rose, and helped with numerous youth Sundays. What I would give to be fearless like that up here again. Our parable this morning from Luke is one that, let's be honest, isn't the easiest to decipher. And my husband, who's a pastor, said, good luck. <laughs> we hear of a persistent widow who fearlessly cries out for justice and an unjust judge who neither fears God or cares about his people. And Luke introduces it all with a reminder about how we are to pray without ceasing. I believe the common assumption is that in the parable, God is the judge and we are the widow. But, if you're like me, you probably heard this and thought, wow, did Luke really just compare God to an unjust judge? And if so, what are we supposed to do with that? And even if we can reconcile that issue, we are left with an even more challenging one. That is, does God only do justice because we cry out for it? Don't we have a God who died on the cross because the justice he was bringing was something that the people didn't want? I might challenge us this morning to hear this parable in another way. So humor me, and let's see what happens if we reverse these commonly assumed roles. Instead of hearing it as if we are the widow and God is the judge, Let's imagine that we're the judge and that God is the persistent widow. We are the ones who have shown over time that we do not fear God and care for the well-beings of others that we should. God is the one who vulnerably and persistently comes to us with cries for justice. Theologian Nadia Boltz Weber writes on this reversal. This parable is a call to persistence and prayer and hope 
But maybe it's also a promise about the persistence of God. Maybe it is us who, even though we fail to fear God or care about people, are finally worn down by the persistence of a God who longs for justice. Maybe prayer isn't the way in which we manipulate God, but is simply the posture in which we finally become worn down by God's persistence. God's persistence in forgiving and being known. And God's persistence in loving us. And God's persistence in being faithful and always, always, always bringing life out of death. She concludes, Maybe the persistence of our prayer is nothing more than our spiritual exposure to the persistence of God's longing for a world of justice and beauty. In his commentary on the text, Alan Culpepper agrees, Maybe this parable speaks to the resolute, persistent, and unrelenting determination of God who keeps knocking on our door, challenging us to respond, urging us to work for the good of our neighbors in need. I wonder if Jesus offered this parable as both a call for us to be persistent in prayer and a reminder that God's persistence in bringing justice to the poor and the oppressed. As I think about my years here as a child and youth at Grace, some of my best memories were when we, as a church family, reached out to serve our neighbors in need in ways that answered God's persistent calling to love and justice. One of the earliest memories I have about Grace is the hunger walk. We walked for what felt like forever, to raise awareness and funds for those who were less fortunate in our community. What stands out in my memory was that my eagerness to participate in this mission outpaced my ability to tackle that long distance. And I remember my poor mom having to finish the walk with me on her shoulders. I think the Hendersonville Times even ended up capturing a photo of that memory for us. I will never live it down. (laughs) But I will always remember the love shown that day, along with the persistence, of course, on my part, not to walk another step. I'm so thankful for growing up here at Grace because you've instilled in me a love of serving others. When I was a youth, we went on three mission trips as a youth group. And uh, forgive me for a moment, because I'm going to take a second to talk about that youth group. I think it's important for you to hear about the relationships that were made within these walls. There are about six of us, three of us here today, so exciting, that went to everything. Every retreat, every youth meeting, every morning Bible study, VBS, caroling, confirmation class, you name it, you saw us. We were all and still are all very different with very different personalities. We went to different schools and had different extracurricular activities. But these people, they were my family. They were grace to me. They loved me for who I was and accepted my faults and shortcomings. I still keep in touch with many of them, and through ups and downs of life, they are still the most important friendships to me. We were with each other through the loss of a parent, ever-changing youth leaders, awkward middle school years, crazy high school drama, college, heartbreak, finding ourselves, weddings, babies. We even mourned the loss of one of our own, Lisa, who was full of random facts and an infectious laugh. Do you know what's in gelatin? Do you know what's in pepper? We do. (laughs) It is through these friendships 
of grace that I experienced the unconditional love of God. And I became more open to share that love in all the places that God has called me. Okay, back to the mission trips for a minute. And I might add that we are all too familiar with show tunes, thanks to Micah. West Virginia, Ohio, the coast of North Carolina. It didn't matter where we were. It seemed as though the people we helped were all the same, all seeking love and justice. Through God's persistence in us, we spent many hours tiling floors, building wheelchair ramps, painting, and our favorite activity, caulking. I will never forget those weeks, all the service and the ways in which they opened my eyes to the needs of people in our community and beyond, and the need for God's justice. As a seminary student, I was able to go to the Dominican Republic with Grace two years in a row. While there, we led Bible camps at some of the schools. We even learned some Bible verses in Spanish and visited a local orphanage. While others provided much-needed medical help, we spent time with the children. Children who had so very little but gave us so much love. These are just a few of these examples of my life where grace opened me to God's persistence of love and justice for all. I know there are so many more, like the quilts, the prayer shawls, those who mentor the youth, clean up the grounds, and give blood to the Red Cross. The promise of our parable this morning is that God will continue to persistently call us toward love, and that our prayer will open us to a vision of the emerging justice of God. I wonder what type of call God is laying on the hearts of all of us today. I wonder how God is calling us to use our voices and hands to bring God's justice to the oppressed in our community and throughout the world. As one who deeply loves grace and connects from afar, I give thanks for the ways in which you have answered this call to mission. And I look forward to hearing about the ways in which you continue to be instruments of God's justice as people of grace. Amen.